This is Milo, the first gym leader in Pokemon Sword and Shield. Although this grass type expert looks like he can bench press two Registeel without breaking a sweat, he does not make it very far into the Champion Cup finals. Since he is the first gym leader, he's supposed to be the weakest gym leader. But what would happen if Milo was unshackled from this role and gave the Galar Gym Challenge everything he's got? There's only one way to find out. Yup. That's me. <laughs> no, no, down here. You might be wondering how I got myself in this situation. The last thing I remember is a very angry ghost guy with a glowing eye. And then I woke up as a wooloo, broke down a fence, and got lost in a spooky forest that has dogs howling as its theme music. And I'm terrified of dogs. Thankfully, Milo came to my rescue, and now he's bringing me back to Turfield. Although, does it look like someone's waiting for us by the entrance? Oi, Milo, can we ask you a couple of questions? Of course. Now that all the gym challengers have passed through the first three gyms, we hear you'll be having an exhibition battle with Kabu. That's right. Which Pokemon do you plan to bring with you for this battle? Well, I'd like to show off the grass types local to Turfield, so I'm thinking of bringing along a Lombre from the pond just due here. Applin are also very common. Ooh, a Lombre? Bringing in a water type to a fire gym? Does that mean you're finally aiming to win an exhibition match? I'm just here to have fun. That's a shame. Well, thank you for your time, Milo. Rude. Rude. Did that Wulu just talk? So I'm a Wulu, so what? Gil, I think the stress is starting to get to us. Yeah, let's go take five. Have a wonderful day. My Milo, is there a reason you don't take these matches too seriously? Kapu has had a lot of ups and downs in his career as a gym leader. I don't want to uproot his current position by showing off too much. And besides, Chairman Rose likes to send the winner of the local exhibition matches out to Stoneside for follow-up battle. It's supposed to provide more entertainment for the crowd since there are less challengers left by that point. But I've got my hands full with the upcoming harvest, and now you as well. Me? Yes, you, Mr. Talking Wooloo that caused trouble all over wet shirts and broke into the slumbering world. I told you my name's Vasco, and I'm not a Wooloo. Ah, uh, my Pokédex would like to disagree. Anyways, we've got to figure out what to do with you. Have you managed to remember anything else? Just me. Oh, well, there's a lot of Wooloo in Turfield. Maybe your girlfriend is somewhere around here. Is Wooloo all you have in your head? Mayhaps. Think, Milo. Are there any gym leaders like yourself named Bay or anything similar? Nope. We've got Milo, that's me, Nessa, Kabu, Piers, Raihan, Alistair... Alistair? Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> He's the ghost type gym leader in Stone Inside. Take me there. No can do, Wulu. Rah. Rah. Why not? Well, I still have my duties as gym leader and a ton of farm work that needs to be done. What about the exhibition match then? Why not try to win it? Then we'll have a great reason to go see Alistair. I suppose so. Although I doubt Lombre alone could take on Kabu's team. Well then bring more Pokemon. Like the Oddish and Cheruba you caught on the way back and your Eldegoss from the gym challenge. All right, all right. Slow your go-goat. I'll give it my best, just for you. Now that I've got his team together from my very vague memories, let's see what Milo can do. Before his match with Kabu, Milo actually had an exhibition match scheduled with Nessa. His Lombre did okay against Nessa's Goldeen, but still took a fair bit of damage before managing to knock it out. Her Aracuda flinched out Lombre twice in a row with its bite, but Milo used his once per battle healing item to heal up and finish off the fish with a seed bomb. Nessa was starting to get on edge, but managed to knock out Lombre with her Dynamax Dreadnought. Milo followed up with his Edelgoss, even though he he was also dynamaxed, he didn't manage to one-shot Turtle, but all he needed was one more turn. What the? Why'd you switch out your Dynamax Pokemon and why me? Well, at least I have a Grass-type move, so I don't gotta worry about Nessa this time. She was also kind of shocked by that little maneuver Milo just did, but also seemed kind of happy to see her rival trying something new. Nessa even gave him a Water Stone as a parting gift, which he promptly used to evolve his Lombre into a Ludicolo. I guess he does at least intend to try and win against Kabu. The battle starts out with a fake out, but Kabu holds nothing back and instantly sets Ludicolo on fire, lowering its physical attack. Two waterfalls later, and his Nine Tails was knocked out. But then Kabu's Arcanine lowers our attack even more with its Intimidate. Since Ludicolo couldn't do much more damage, it got knocked out after taking several Flame Wheels. Milo followed up with Cherim, which planted some Leech Seeds into Arcanine's fur while it was busy rolling around the ground like the dog it is. Then he followed up with Applin, which apparently scared Kabu enough to make him use will o -Wisp. Seems like Kabu should have been more worried about Applin's defense, which helped it bulk out a Flame Wheel and then let it knock out the Arcanine? That's right, this baby Apple! 
astonished us all by landing the finishing blow on the hot dog. Sadly, it could magically bulk out a Dynamax attack from Senescorch. I'm getting a bit worried here because Kabu's ace Pokemon has an absolute advantage over our team. Have a little faith in the friendly farmer, Mr. Games. I'm used to dealing with droughts, wildfires, and pesky bugs. I made sure to give Gloom an Akaberry from our farms near Bridgefield. They are especially good at resisting flames. And this next part won't be very organic, but we often use toxins to take care of invasive bugs trying to consume all the crops. I guess our problem isn't as big anymore, but it's still there. Oh right, we still haven't used our Dynamax yet. It looks like our attacks won't be doing much damage, but that poison sure is. I'm a bit surprised Milo was able to pull off a victory here. Kabu was surprised as well. He even gave Milo a Sunstone as a congratulatory gift, which he used right away to evolve his gloom into a Blossom. He also asked the trainers at his gym to cover for his farm work while he's away. And then he made his way to Hammerlock. He noticed a distressed boy near the park who was looking for an applin. Apparently there's this whole tradition in Galar that if you give the one you like an applin, you'll be together forever. I wish I had someone to give an applin to. Anyways, his crush was going to be moving to a different region very very soon. Ba ba ba. So what does Milo do? He just hands over the one from his team. You know, the one that was strong enough to knock out an Arcanine. He asked for help so nicely, how could I possibly say no? Besides, once we talk to Alistair and get you all taken care of, I won't need a tough nut team. Come on Milo, don't say that. We all saw what you could do when you give it your all. Why stop as soon as you've helped me out? The cheering crowds, the intensity of high stakes battles, the hopes and dreams of your opponent. It's a bit much for me. I prefer having battles for fun, and I enjoy the slow life in turf field. As long as I can have a good time with my fellow gym leaders, I don't really need the spotlight. The sunlight is just fine for me. Hey Milo. How'd things go? Well, I couldn't just give away your Applin to her. But then she said... I can tell from the smile on your face. Yeah! Anyways, thank you for giving me your Applin out of the blue like that. But, uh, could you tell me where to find one? Uh, on my own? Of course! They usually end up rolling by the huge berry tree, south of the daycare on Route 5. Thank you so much, Milo. And, um, I was originally going to give her this sweet apple instead of an Applin. And since I don't need it anymore, here. A thank you gift from me. Aw, oh, how sweet. Turns out the apple was a bit too sweet for Milo's taste, but his applin absolutely loved it. So much that it ended up evolving into an appleton. Before getting to Alistair's gym, there was some sort of commotion happening in Still on Side. Turns out one of the gym challengers was attempting to destroy a historical monument, and since Milo was the first to the scene, he had to take care of it. His Lulicolo made quick work of the Duosian, which was too busy trying to set up walls. A challenger attempted to strike back with Hatterm, but uh, as it turns out, Ludicolo is quite the bulky Pokemon. Gothita tried to meddle with her defenses with some fake tears, allowing his Ponyta to finish off the fight while well, just the Ludicolo. We still had the rest of our team on hand, so Milo sent out Appleton to get a feel for what his new Pokemon could do. The Ponyta tried to boost its speed, perhaps preparing itself for a quick escape, but Milo easily took out the last Pokemon. Gym Leader Milo, it's not often we see you this far from Turfield. Thank you for protecting Galar's history from this troubled trainer. And I heard from Leon that you also helped save a Wulu that got lost in the slumbering wield. You've really been going all out lately. On behalf of Galar, I owe you a favor. If you need something, don't hesitate to ask. Anyways, we've got to go and clean up this mess, and I hear you've got an exhibition match with Alistair? Best don't be late. There is an imposter among us. You! You did this to me! Mr. Games! Didn't think I'd see you back there so soon! Wait, so he wasn't joking when he said he wasn't actually a Wooloo? Nope! Turn me back please, I have to find Bay. Mm, I'll pass. Come on Alistair, why won't you help this Wooloo out? Well, uh, you see, it's not that I won't, but that, uh, I can't. What do you mean you can't? Bibbly wobbly, timey wimey, space stuff. So there's nothing you can do? Well, maybe. Then do it. Okay, but uh, there's two conditions. We can do two, right, Wooloo? First, you'll need to catch Eternatus. I know where to find one. You do? He do. And two? You have to become champion. Oh, that's um... Milo, help a Wooloo out, come on. You need to be that strong to control Eternatus' power. Only then I can channel its energy and send Mr. Games back to where he wants to go. C can't you do that, Alistair? Nope, nada, not a chance. I think that's why I'm in this mess to begin with. Yup. 
this is all a bit much. Not even half of it. I, I, I guess it is my job to take care of all the Wulu in the Gala region. Me included? You included. Well then, Milo. Your trial starts here. Alistair starts the battle with his Yamask. Bloop. Mimikyu tries to lower our attack power with its baby doll eyes, but loses its disguise in the process. It then managed to land not one, but two critical hits with its slash attack. Milo follows up with a Blossom and uses a Moonblast to finish it off. He recovers some health by using Giga Drain on Cursula, while Alistair places a curse on us. And bye bye, Cursula. That left him with just the giant Gengar of Doom, which instantly used Max Ooze to take out Blossom and boost his own stats. I have a bad feeling about this. Milo responds by sending out Eldegoss and uses Protect to stall out a turn. Of course, that's never good enough against these Dynamax moves. The nice thing is that Eldegoss's Calm Down ability helps reduce this monster's speed stat. After three turns of Ooze boosting its special attack, the Gengar returns down to size and is up against our Cherim, which manages to outspeed it and plant some Leech Seeds, and then gets obliterated by Poison. Time for Appleton to shine. With a max guard? We're protecting? Ugh, I see why now. Luckily, Appleton survived with a few HP to spare and manages to land one hit with Max Wormwind. Since it couldn't outspeed Gengar, it, uh, goes down. Wait, 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 me? I guess I am the last Pokemon on this team, but there's no way I can outspeed this dude. Thankfully, those Leech Seeds pulled off its last bit of health. So, we won? We won! Y you must... Keep training, Milo. No, going back to Turfield for the usual training then? N no, go to Opal. She'll help you out. Uh, also, winner of our match has a follow-up exhibition in Sir Chester in two days. Well, once the Wulu starts rolling, we must keep it going. When we got to Opal's gym, she offered to observe our battle style and give us some feedback on how to improve. And what better way to do that than to battle us herself? Her whizzing was instantly a problem since it could use a poison type move. Milo sent out Eldegoss, which was kind of slow but bulky. Opal then started asking us questions about her. Something about understanding your opponent in order to have the upper hand in battle? I don't think that usually gives us a stat boost though, but we'll take it. She followed up with Togekiss, another threat to our team thanks to its flying type moves. So we pulled an Alice and put it to sleep. Achoo! Milo followed up with Cherim, which used Sunny Day to change its form and give itself a nice special defense boost. It didn't help that much. Milo then tried using Blossom, which no sludge bomb? <laughs> And that left Opal with just the cake, which we instantly laced with poison. She used up all three of her Dynamax turns to take out Blossom. And now we have three turns of giant pie. Are you team pie or team cake? Comment below. The pie was confused about me saying that. <laughs> no joke, all three turns of Dynamax it just hit itself in confusion. I don't know how we're gonna get the champion at this rate. Opal also managed to keep recovering from the poison by using Draining Kiss a bunch, but she could only stall out so much. In the end, both Appleton and All Creamy got knocked out during the same turn. Milo only won because I was still on his team. You're welcome. After our battle, Opal took us to an old friend of hers all the way at the Isle of Armor for some special soup that would supposedly help Appleton by giving it a new Dynamax form and a special move. I really wanted to try that yummy looking mushroom soup as well, but they didn't let me have any. It won't have any effect, they say. Having filled our bellies, we made our way to the City of Snow for the next exhibition match. Melanie leads the battle with a frost moth. <laughs> As soon as it snapped out of confusion, Frostmoth set up a hail. We finished it off with a waterfall, but uh, then had to face off with their Manitan. Blossom was next, using its only turn to set up a sunny day. Lucky for us, that was all the setup Cherim needed. Using Weather Ball in the sun gave us a powerful fire type move. Her poor Ice Cube did not stand a chance. Having a 4 times weakness to ice type moves meant that Appleton had to be very careful. So Milo used Max Guard to stall Lapras's last turn of Dynamax, and then we got hit by a very strong ice beam and became frozen? Oh no. Never mind. The pie was thawed out thoroughly before cooking. Wink. Too bad our max sweetness move wasn't strong enough to defeat Lapras. Not enough sugar baby. Usually this is where Milo would have lost, but I'm here now. It looks like our time for training was over. There were four gym challengers who have already gathered all eight gym badges, so Milo had to make his way to Winden for the finals which were close approaching. I also told him a bit more about Eternatus and Rose's plans for it. So while the gym challengers were duking it out in the semi-finals, he went to Rose Tower to claim that favor from earlier. At first, Rose laughed at Milo's proposition to help capture Eternatus, but after a bit of negotiation, he agreed to let Milo try if he could win a battle against the chairman. So here we are, Rose starts out with his Cavalier. Oh boy, this ain't gonna be easy. In a panic, Milo sends out Blossom and uses Sunny Day to set up for Cherim's Weather Ball. Take that, Rose! He sent out Berserker next, which met the same fate as its predecessor. The bad news was that the sunlight had already faded by 
by the time Kling Clang came out. Poor Cherim was neither fast nor bulky enough to set up a second set of sun and actually get an attack in. Milo did what he always does when a foe is too fast, send out his bulky Eldegoss. Every time we got hit, his speed fell more and more. Meanwhile, Eldegoss slowly chipped away at the gear's health with its energy balls. Milo sent out Appleton, Gigantamaxed, and went for an all-out attack, which still wasn't enough to get the KO. The good news was that Rose couldn't do much damage either. It was time for Rose to Dynamax, and we were almost out of max turns. So Appleton went for the max Wormwind to lower the elephant's attack stat. Since her foe was a physical attacker, Milo decided to use Iron Defense and rely on our bulk to stall out his Dynamax. Then he followed up with Apple Acid, a move unique to Appleton that also lowers the enemy's special defense stat. Just like that, Milo managed to gain Rose's approval to try and capture Eternatus when it awakens. He even gave us a rocky helmet for when that time comes. The semifinals were just about finished, so Milo and I went back to Winden Stadium to prepare for the finals. Looks like Milo's first opponent will be Raihan. Since this is a single Raihan, ladies, he leads the battle with Sunny Day Torkoal. Milo stalls out one turn, thanks to Fake Out, then uses Waterfall despite the weather effects. Raihan responds with a Solar Beam, but lucky for us, that doesn't do much damage. The sunlight finally faded, and now our waterfalls can actually do some damage. Right hand must be getting pretty desperate, because instead of attacking, he goes for a yawn. Ah, my turtle. Right hand sends out Turdinator, I sleep. Sadly, Ludicolo fell for right hand's shell trap. Since Milo didn't want to play around anymore, he sent out Blossom and used a sludge bomb that ended up poisoning the Turdinator. Also, since our attack was special, his shell traps didn't activate. One dragon down, three to go. Flygon wasn't that scary since we also knew Moonblast. Kudra was up next and knowing Raihan, he'd waste a turn changing the weather. <laughs> yup. That left Raihan with just his Duraludon. Since he was fast enough to outspeed Blossom, Milo sent out Eldegoss. You know the drill by now, we use Protect the Stall and get hit anyways and send our Cotton Spores to slow down the Duraludon. Once the Dynamax is gone, Milo could safely send out Cherim, set up a sunny day, and finish off the fight with a hot humid weather ball. I think we might have broken his AC. Looks like Pierce won his battle against Kabu. Thank goodness. Obstagoon entered the main stage and used up struck to get a feel for the crowd. He then ended Blossom's non-existent singing career with a throat chop. Cherim followed up with a dazzling gleam. After all, we didn't see any signs saying no flash photography. Pierce used throat chop on Cherim as well, but couldn't do quite enough damage to our depressed Cherry. And that left him with the post-show host, Skuntank. We landed one dazzling gleam, but got snarled away. Oh, there's Eldegoss. Using Hyper Voice of all things? <laughs> what are we doing? Fighting Pierce at his own singing game? Looks like we've made it to the final match, and we'll be going up against Alistair? of all people. Uh, so I reckon we uh, should battle. Crumbs, that was ace. Now then, it's time. Harvest time? No, time to go to your Eternatus. Hey Milo, come to the Hammerlock Gym ASAP. Is waking up. It looks like Leon was also on standby, waiting for Eternatus to awaken. By the time we arrived, he had already battled with this beast and failed to capture it. Now it was our turn. This wasn't going to be easy, considering it's overleveled and a poison type. <laughs> We're screwed. We were definitely gonna need to slow this thing down before Appleton enters the battle. So Eldegoss it is. <laughs> oh boy. Appleton, it's on you, bud. Oh no. Huh? Appleton lived? Appleton lived! And it used a Dragon Pulse as well, doing just enough damage to knock out Eternatus. And Milo captured it in a friend ball. Now there was only one thing left to do. It was time to answer. Could Milo actually become champion? Because if not, I'm gonna be stuck as a woo for the rest of my life. <laughs> Leon's Pokemon was completely unfazed by the confusion, but thankfully Ludi lived with just 5 HP. Since our health was so low, Leon didn't try to protect this time. Rookity mistake. And next was Haxorus, who entered into an outrage right away. Since he is fast, Eldegoss time! Milo used Protect to stall the outrage while confusion sets in, then used Cotton Guard to bulk up our Cotton Ball. Leon still managed to hit us very hard, but Milo wasn't gonna take any chances, so he used his one-time full heal in hopes of getting to lower their speed even more. More. Oh so yes, that rocky helmet from Rose is now an Arcan Ball, so every time Leon hits us with an Outrage, not only does he lose some speed, but a little bit of HP. And just when Haxorus was almost defeated, Leon used his one-time healing item. As hard as Leon tried to take us down, Eldegoss took Outrage after Outrage, and slowly finished off Haxorus with a Hyper Voice. Ah, <sighs> that was satisfying. The joy was short-lived, since Dragapult was up next. Not only does it know Flamethrower, it's also extremely fast, and has the 
nuclear body ability, which means we cannot lower its speed. Since Blossom New Moonblast, it got to go out next. I guess it's also pretty bulky, since it tanked two flamethrowers and finished off the Dragapult all on its own. Mr. Rhyme was gonna be another huge hurdle since it knows ice type moves and was also faster than Blossom. Too bad Eldegoss is knocked out right now. Let's hope Cherim can. Milo, wait, me! Cherim is too slow and not bulky enough to set up properly. Alright, I guess I'll. Oh, everything's spinning! Oh right, I'm gonna use that static from my wool to paralyze him. Can't catch these hands. Well, hooves. Ouch! It's psychic hit pretty hard. I guess I'm gonna hit him with a reversal. Uh-oh. He looks angry. Mr. Milo, I don't feel so good. Ah, where am I? Leon? Milo? Good morning, fluffy head. Milo, what, what happened? The last thing I remember is a very angry clown. Oh, the Champion Cup battle with Leon. You got knocked out from a psychic and were asleep for three days straight. How are you feeling? Head's feeling kind of fuzzy, but I'm okay. Glad to hear. So what happened with the rest of the match? Did you win? It looks like I'm still a Wulu. You lost, didn't you? Champion Milo! Champion Milo! Can we get an interview? Did, did she just say champion? <laughs> yeah. It was all thanks to you. Thanks to your Thunder Wave, Charon was able to safely use Sunny Day and take out Mr. Rhyme with a Fire-type Weather Ball. Leon sent out Inteleon next, but we were able to take it out with a couple of Solar Beams. His Charizard used a turn to knock out Charon, then I stalled out one turn with Max Guard. Uh-oh, how did Appleton end up winning the battle? Remember when Opal took us to the Isle of Armor? Yeah, to have some soup. I didn't get any though. Well, she also gave me a very cute Fairy-type Pokemon named Meryl, told me that I should experiment with breeding methods to transfer its Rock-type move Rollout over to my Appleton. While we were negotiating, Negotiating with Rose, one of my gym trainers successfully bred the move onto a Cherubi and then onto an Applet, and my assistant Pia brought it up to Winden with her for the semifinals. It was then able to cross pollinate with my Appleton to teach it rollout, which came in handy as Max Rocks fall. It turned out to be the only move that could actually deal some damage to Leon's Charizard. If Opal hadn't helped us out and gotten me to transfer that rock type move onto Appleton, there's no way I could have won. Oi! We can hear you talking in there! Can you open up for an interview, please? Weren't they super rude to you last time we saw them? Mm-hmm, but I won't let their rudeness get to me. Wait, but if you did become champion, why am I still a woo? Oh, uh, well... Sleep! There he is. Come on in, Alistair. Milo! Mr. Games! P -p preparations are ready! You ready to send me back? Mm, forward. Forward? Milo! Please explain. It, it sounded a bit weird to me too. Alistair said you were sent here from a different world with some specific goal, and that unfinished goal acts as a lock that prevents him from sending you back to your own world. So I'm stuck here as a Wulu until I get enough information on Bay. Well, Alistair found someone with that name. She's t training in a different region. And apparently she's a gym leader candidate in Galar. For the stone side gym. Soon, I'll be free, too. You really don't like the spotlight either, huh, Alistair? I... but battles are fun. Everyone staring at me is not. I think we're getting off topic. Oh, right. So this bee trainer is supposed to return to the Galar region just in time for the next gym challenge. Okay, but what does this have to do with forward? Your, your soul is slowly filling with otherworldly knowledge. And, uh, the more it fills... The more threatening your soul's aura becomes. Like a plant releasing pheromones to communicate with others nearby, your soul will start radiating with terrifying force. A force that will attract all sorts of legendary Pokemon to you. Once they sense it, they will come to... um... to... P put out your flame. The, the longer you remain here, the stronger you'll glow. While you were asleep, a very threatened Zacian tried to come after you. I, I just barely managed to subdue it with my team. Um, I'm sorry Vasco, I, I barely became champion, mostly thanks to your help and that of the gym leaders. But if a bunch of legendary Pokemon started attacking you at once, uh, I don't think I'd be able to protect you. We hear B is very formidable. So formidable that she should be able to fend off a few legendaries and buy you some more time to figure out what your goal is. The push forward will also dim, uh, dim some of your aura's glow for a bit. Well, that's some good news. But... Mm, It'll cost you some... some of your memories. You mean I might forget you and Milo? Will. It's it's sad to think you won't remember us, but right now you're like an endangered flower, wilting in the dusk. All we can do is take you to a greenhouse and hope that it's enough to save you, even if it means forgetting us. Anyways, we should... should begin. Thank you for everything. Thank you too, Vasco. You've pushed me to greater heights than I could ever imagine. He has a knack for that. Ah. Uh. I guess I'm as ready as I'll ever be. Then let us begin. Take me home, Potswick Road.
to the place where I belong on a seaboat with a trainer. She's so strong. Champion. Maybe. <laughs>